Africa is the continent most ravaged by every catastrophe known to humankind. Yet Africa is a living territory, one which regenerates itself as quickly as it is destroyed, one which has become an expert in finding solutions to unimaginable problems. If Africa continues to survive, rebuild itself and grow in spite of the difficulties it faces, it is thanks to the internal mechanisms of solidarity and systems of self-help that it is developed to meet the needs of its most destitute inhabitants. To be physically disabled is to be marginalized by society. People say disabled people hide away in the attic, but I wanted to do more than that. I work in fuel trafficking. We can't really do anything else, except beg at traffic lights. The 130-kilometer highway that links Lagos, the capital of Nigeria, and Benin is flooded every day with vehicles whose occupants smuggle fuel. Petrol costs twice as much in Benin as it does in Nigeria, and the majority of the smugglers are polio victims whose presence is tolerated by the police. This disease is one of the greatest tragedies to devastate West Africa. In Benin alone, there are half a million sufferers who have no access to specialized treatment. Along the highway, an environment of mutual assistance and support has been created that makes the work of these polio victims easier. When we see children playing soccer, we feel really jealous. Parents have to be educated so that what has happened to us doesn't happen to other children. We need to ask parents to take their children to the hospital to be vaccinated. I'm a mechanic. My job is to rebuild the mopeds the guys with polio use to transport fuel. I do this by stripping down two Vespa mopeds to make one vehicle with a 400-liter tank. I place the tank on one side of the vehicle. The brake and accelerator pedals have to be on the handlebars because these people can't use their feet. If the tank were to come into contact with the spark plug, everything would catch fire. During the journey to the Nigerian border, the polio sufferers are usually accompanied by a mechanic 
who assists them with any problem that may arise on the road. This assistant is shared in case one of the others needs him. Our role is to help the driver, but never to take his place. I'm here to help him if something goes wrong with the vehicle or with any other problem that might happen on the road. All of this depends on several factors, such as repair costs, the income of the person accompanying me, the availability of the product, etc. Since when fuel is scarce on the Benin market, its value increases. There's also the fluctuation of the Naira, which is the currency we use. Benin is the land of experiences. The government isn't behind this activity. It's the disabled people themselves who have found a solution. And society believes it, accepts it, and, let's say, tolerates it. Because in reality, transporting fuel is illegal. Polio has wreaked havoc in Africa, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, and more specifically in Benin. Today, 7% of the population suffers from the disease, but unfortunately, only 1% of them receive proper care. Despite all of the vaccination and awareness campaigns that have been carried out, Many people, for religious reasons, will not allow themselves or their children to be vaccinated. I was very young when I got the disease. From what my parents told me, I must have been about six when I came down with a very high fever. They took me to the hospital and after that, I never walked again. The authorities, the police, the customs officials, they turned a blind eye and let us through. Fuel trafficking is illegal, but we, the forces of law and order, turn a blind eye when it comes to people with polio. It's a means of subsistence for them. 